Answer this question honestly. How do you feel on a Monday morning? Do you throw off the covers, excited to face the day, passionate about the work that you're doing and thrilled to live another day? Or do you wake up to the screeching alarm clock? Do you smash snooze a couple times and then force yourself to get out of bed at the last minute to go to a job that you hate, a job that you're only working at because it pays the bills? If that second case sounds more like you than the first case, you're gonna be interested in what the people of Okinawa have to say. Okinawa is a small island based off of the coast of Japan that has the highest percentage of people over 100 years old. The people there live for a very, very long time and they believe that they have the equation that makes you excited to jump out of bed every single day. The equation that allows you to feel fulfilled and really like you're living a life of meaning. They believe that this kind of a life is completely possible if you follow the equation and it all starts with a choice, a choice to pursue this feeling instead of pursuing other things that nowadays most of us pursue. It's going to be difficult and they recognize that. It's going to be tough, but it's a choice that you can make. It is completely within your capability. So let's talk about this equation. There are four different elements to it and when all four of these things overlap, you get Ikigai. And the first part of this life satisfaction equation comes down to doing what you love. If you want to feel satisfied, you have to spend the majority of your time doing things that satisfy you. It's fairly simple. And for the majority of us, that comes down to our work. That's the thing that fills the majority of our time. And the people of Okinawa believe that you shouldn't just work to live, you should live to work. And that important distinction allows us to get one step closer to that feeling of satisfaction. And in order to do this, by definition, we have to change the definition that we have of work. So many of us have negative connotations of work. It's something that we're forced to do. We have to work hard, we have to grind, we have to push ourselves to do things that we don't want to do. The very first step is to recognize that work doesn't always have to be like that. We can find work that brings us this kind of deep fulfillment. And a good metric in order to do this is how frequently you enter flow states. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, the author of Flow, actually figured out that the happiest people on this planet aren't the people that achieved the most and got the most success. They were very simply the people that found themselves in flow state the most frequently. They are the happiest people. Getting into that state where you're fully immersed in whatever it is that you're doing. So much so that you forget everything else. You forget that time is passing and you're fully immersed in a singular piece of work that's pushing you slightly out of your comfort zone. But the people of Okinawa actually take this one step further. They pursue micro flow states multiple times throughout the day. Now this is very simply when you're doing day-to-day -day household chores or in fact if you're doing anything, you're doing the shopping, you're doing the dishes, you're going on a walk, getting so fully immersed in that singular activity that you enter that flow state. They say that you don't just have to enter flow state in one specific field when you're deep at work writing something, like we normally picture flow state. They believe that you can enter that state of bliss and forget everything else by fully immersing yourself in your activities on a day-to-day -day basis. And by going by this definition of flow, we actually increase the frequency with which we can enter flow on a day-to-day -day basis. Hearing this reminds me of the quote that Marcus Aurelius would say, Concentrate every minute like a Roman, like a man, on doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness, tenderly, willingly with justice, and on freeing yourself from all other distractions. Instead of just going through life mindlessly, aimlessly, it's about being intentional with how you go about even the most basic things in life. And like I said, the more you enter flow state, the happier you'll be, the more likely you are to be able to jump out of bed excited to reach the day. But also, the more often you enter flow states, the better you'll get at the activities that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Which leads us on to the second part of Ikigai. The second part of this life satisfaction equation is to fill your time with things that you are good at. Now when I first heard this I thought they were talking about talent. 
I thought they were talking about pursuing things that you had a natural gift for, that you were naturally good at. But when I did some more reading into the topic, this wasn't actually true. They're talking about your propensity to be able to get better at that skill, not necessarily where you are in this current moment. They say it's more about trajectory and your passion to learn a skill than your inherent talent. And this is actually why I started this video by talking about what you love. If you really want to become great at a topic, if you want to become a master at something, I believe that it's impossible to do that without absolutely loving the skill that you're at. Because if you want to become incredible, the competition is so high that you're competing with other people who do like and enjoy that skill. And if you don't like it, you're not going to have enough willpower to truly master it. So start with what you love and that's going to lead you towards something that you can become incredible at. Many athletes have said, if you want to get better at a sport, it all comes down to falling more in love with it because then it's going to be easy to spend more time in it and easy to improve. And then once you've got this, once you've got something you love and something that you're good at, and we're going to talk more about how to find this later on in the video, you've got to find the overlap with that, with what the world needs. And that leads us on to the third part of Ikigai, the life satisfaction equation. You see, impact is inherently meaningful for us as human beings. We grew up in tribes and in order for a tribe to succeed, everybody had to contribute. So evolution rewarded us with that by making us feel good when we did that. And that's carried over to modern life. You can't deny, helping somebody feels incredible. It's one of the main motivators for everything that I'm doing and I think that it should be a, a core pillar value for everybody to implement. And the people of Okinawa take this to the extreme. So so much so that they never retire. This is a really interesting point. Even the people over the age of 100 are still tending to their gardens. They keep vegetable gardens with mangoes and teas and they're constantly doing that so they can feel like they're of value. They never stop. But then, kind of conversely, but you can marry the two ideas together, they marry this concept of never retiring with living a slow life. They truly believe that being in a hurry is completely the opposite of living a deep and satisfied life. There's a phrase that they pass around between each other that says, walk slowly and you'll go far. So they recommend that you always keep busy, but you should never be in a hurry. People have reported going to the island and you can walk around and you'll never see an old man sitting on a bench doing nothing. They'll always be busy, but they'll be doing it in the present moment, focused, kind of like that micro flow that we talked about earlier, deeply in the present moment and just getting things done. But there's a reason that I included it third and there's a quote that summarizes my reasoning. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Now the fourth part of the equation is quite interesting because if you go and you speak with the people of Okinawa and you go and you research the concept of Ikigai, it's not often talked about. This was actually something that when this concept traveled over to the West, Westerners added in. And the fourth part of the equation is doing something which can earn you money. Now, again, this is interesting. The fact that they don't value this so much, but us as Westerners, we value this so much so that we added this into part of our equation is interesting. But I found that if you can do something that you love and you do something that you're good at and you do something that the world needs, often money is a byproduct of getting the other three things right. Whilst this is the full part of the equation and money's definitely necessary because money's not everything and money doesn't solve all of your problems, but it does solve all of your money problems. There's definitely a place for it in the equation, but it's just interesting the fact that this was added on by Westerners and not something that they actually talk about inherently. And when you manage to get all parts of these equations correct, you find the overlapping point between these four points that's when you get ikigai. That's when you get that deep life satisfaction, that feeling of meaning where you're excited to get out of the day. But how do we go about the process of actually finding that? In order to find this, I think that there's three steps that must be followed. The first one is making the choice, making a choice to prioritize this, this feeling of life satisfaction over other things, over money and fame and job promotions and going to uni and get the normal route that most of us take. 
The second step, if you don't know what you love, you don't know what you're good at, you don't know what the world needs, and you don't know what you can get paid for, curiosity is pretty incredible. We can get to some pretty magical places by just doing the things that excite us, and the things that we're passionate about, the things that we have an interest in. Exploring them can open up new rabbit holes that we didn't even believe were possible with our worldview before. And then the third part of the process is to recognize that you're not gonna be able to sit down now and create a plan. You've gotta start taking action. And by taking action, by at least moving towards the direction of Ikigai, even if it's not a perfect plan, then you're gonna be able to gather data and you're gonna be able to better figure out the parts of this equation. And I truly believe that this is an equation that we should all be thinking about and we should all be trying to use as a guiding light towards living a deep, meaningful, satisfied life. If you've enjoyed this video and you want more concepts on this, click the like button. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna show more of these types of videos on your homepage and subscribe as well. More of these positive videos will come up on your homepage. I appreciate you for sticking around till the end and I'll see you in the next video.